Back by popular demand, the team from Bondi Rescue, Reedy, Corey and Whippet, now head west to kick up a storm in the legendary Road Boss Rally. Competing in a V8 supercharged ute called the Bondi Beast, the lovable rogues will trek over four and a half thousand kilometres across the heart of Australia, taking on the elements at each other in the adventure of a lifetime. Along the way, they'll get into all sorts of mischief as they navigate, argue, get bogged, break down and get hopelessly lost. They'll be cheating, skylarking and partying with plenty of laughs along the way. We'll get to the naked truth as they prank, wash and busk their way, setting the world on fire in an arresting outback adventure. When not competing or making trouble, the boys will be raising money and awareness for the charity Give It and supporting drought affected towns across rural Australia. Get set for a wild ride as we head off in the Bondi Rescue Road Boss Rally. The Bondi Rescue Boys arrive in Cowra in the Bondi Beast, joining 65 other cars for the start of the legendary Road Boss Rally. And it isn't long before they catch up with a boss himself, Jamie Lawson. No worries, it'll be absolute pleasure to have you along and uh, we just can't wait to see you experience the Road Boss Rally. As all the cars started rolling up and, and hanging out and meeting each other, we're just like, right, this is going to be a, a, a whole lot of fun. We locked and loaded. What can possibly go wrong? When we arrived in Cowra and we sort of got to meet some of the other teams and some of the other cars, it was almost like meeting an extended family. Everyone was really welcoming. Myself, Reedy and Corey, we've had a few good trips together over the years and this is shaping up to be another epic adventure. What we've kind of found out is that a lot of the crews are really competitive. They were coming up and they were checking out our car, asking what kind of engine's in it, and we were just using big mechanic words without what we were talking about. Said it had turbo in it. None of us have ever driven a rally car. None of us have really ever been out in the bush that much. So yeah, it was a bit nerve wracking, but also very exciting. For something that we've been thrown into where we know nothing about, I think we're going to give it a real good crack. It seemed like it's more about everybody having a good time than actually who wins. And I'm sure over the next 10 days, we'll get an idea of how competitive it's going to get. This rally's about four and a half thousand kilometres over the 10 days. So um, it, they're pretty busy days. And given that we're not traveling down normal roads, they're, they're pretty hard conditions. and. Um, but you do it safely, sensibly, and you always get there in the end. Welcome to Cara, and the race is about to begin, and here we go, three, two, one, go! It wasn't just the rally that had the boys nervous. Corey and Whippet had real concerns about Reedy's driving. Some people might judge me as being a bad driver, but I think I go all right. I drove a garbage truck for 12 years, or maybe I was a rubbish driver for 12 years, I don't know. Mate, just having fun out the outback of Australia with me mates in me ute. Little bit. I don't know what that means, but it's probably not good. You don't have to be um, an elite driver or, or even into motorsport at all. you just got to have a love of cars, the bush, the people, entertainment. There's something there for everybody. Already, their inexperience is on show, with the boys failing to read the Road Boss Bible, which is their all-important course map. We got handed the Road Boss Rally Bible, which is the book that you're not allowed to ever let out of your sight. Even though they said, make sure you read the book, we just flick some pages and threw it in the back. It all comes down to this. <laughs> And I have no idea what it means. Have you not been studying this? <laughs> Did you not do your homework? We like to wing it. You're going to be winging it. Not go. surprisingly, just minutes into the rally, the boys okay. are hopelessly lost. 200 metres. 440 metres, we turn left. When we finally got out of the car park, <laughs> um, we got about 3 or 4k into the race and we got lost. It wasn't the ideal start, but I guess it's going to be a bit of a steep learning curve in navigation, driving, and putting up with each other. Whippet's first stuffer. <laughs> Whippet just got us lost. Get him out of the front. I just said we've got to go left, and he goes, nah, not yet. Oh, bull Let's fight about it, Let's then. go. Get out of the car. <laughs> Come on. 
We let Corey drive first, and the number one mistake we did make was we let Whippet navigate first. And Whippet's navigation skills. What? What page are we on? Oh, that's good. What page are we on? Their fellow competitors gave them no hope of winning the rally, and the early signs certainly weren't encouraging. A lot of the crew didn't think we'd make it past day one, and it was starting to look like they were right. Our tactic for the race was just to have fun. So we wanted to share the navigating, share the driving, share the napping in the back. Despite the ongoing drought, a recent downpour creates a heavy track for the opening 550 kilometre stage. The mud plus the grass made for some really fun driving. That first rally section was really fun, a lot of side sliding and drifting around corners and hitting some mud. We're giving that car a good nudge, well, I know I was anyway. First sort of day of the course, quite green. It looked really rich, the soil looked good, the trees looked healthy. Yeah, I was quite surprised actually, it looked really nice. It's not long before the boys are on the receiving end of what will be the first of many pranks. We turned up to a checkpoint and this car looked like it was dead set on fire. I said to the boys, let's give him a hand and Corey pretty much looked at me and said, mate, what are you gonna do? And I said, yeah, good point. One of the cars up ahead just starts bellowing smoke like all over the joint, we're just like, Oh no, first day they're out. All right, his brakes are on fire. <laughs> smells disgusting. We thought, oh, we better try and get out and give these guys a hand. Soon realised they were just playing a prank on us. They've got this little trick thing where they tip a bit of oil or whatever it is down through the, through the exhaust pipes and it just burns the hell out of it. That was sort of the first eye-opener to realise that there's going to be a fair few pranks going on in this Road Boss Rally. It's starting to look like this is going to happen a lot. And happen a lot, they did with the first gate they reach deliberately tied shut. The first gate we arrived at that had 19 cable ties in it, we started to realise that we were the butt of a lot of jokes. When you're a rookie on tour, the people that have been around the bush a couple of times, literally, are gonna play a few pranks on you. We got done about six times on the first day. It's not to say that we didn't lose some zip ties on the old gates, but we went through and left them for the next bunch of people. Just getting a little uh, <laughs> quick wear stop. That's what happens when you lock our gates with uh, cable ties, <laughs> all right? Don't do it again. I think that's a really good thing with the Road Boss Rally is how fun it is and how much fun people want to have, you know? Still early in the rally and despite their heavy punishment, the car's holding up well. I've never driven a car that fast around tracks and corners and over holes and ditches, so we gave it a bit of a flogging and it held up in one piece. So fingers crossed it does it for the next nine days. She's a 5.7 litre V8 with a bit of... Mate, it's unreal. I'd have that car any day, especially for, for rallies like this. It's a good beast. It's a four wheel drive. It's got big tyres, good suspension. Um, it's even got aircon. With the three of them stuck together in such close quarters, it was never going to be easy. And already, Reedy's constant chatter starts to wear thin. Some people say I'm a bit of a motor mouth, and look, I like to enrich the journey with my knowledge, and so, you know, some people might not like that. Well, too bad. Reedy doesn't shut up. But then, you know, there's plenty of really good banter between the three of us going on. Reedy's obviously a uh, great value in small doses. After a challenging drive and still on a steep learning curve, the Bondi boys finally arrive in Mount Hope. First stop was Mount Hope, and I was just hoping we'd make it there, to be honest. With Whippet's navigational skills, we were in big trouble. Heading to Mount Hope, that was pretty much what we were living off. A bit of hope that we'd get there in one piece, keep the car in one piece. Beautiful little town, and it's sort of the first real sense of how small these communities are out here. You know, the struggles that they go through being a town of you know, sometimes only 10, maybe 20 people. We got there on dark because we got lost so many times, unfortunately. But once we got settled, got the campsite set up and uh, there was plenty of fires and stuff and they have a dinner and obviously the traditional thing to do is have an auction. A big part of the Road Boss Rally is about the post-race entertainment with regular auctions used to raise funds for charity. The charity component of the Road Boss Rally is key. It's all about the fun and the laughter and the entertainment and the challenge and the cars. The one thing that brings us together is the generosity of the people there. 
That's one thing we all have in common is our generous hearts. And so each year we choose a charity and we've picked up Give It, which uh, we believe is the best charity in Australia. Each one of the people are an ambassador of Give It. They're fundraising for Give It to get their cars here and they're uh, spreading the word as well. And as you know, when we go into the towns, they're so incredibly generous. I've never met a group of people more beautiful. They're extraordinary people. Apart from welcoming us and kind of bringing us into their rally family, the generosity that I've seen is second to none. To see what Give It and Road Boss rallies actually come together to help produce for these outback communities that really, really need help, so positive. They connect people that have with people that need. And so there's so many people out in rural, remote Australia that need things. So for us to get behind it, we couldn't be happier. To me, it's a perfect fit, you know. Jamie always says, you know, ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And, you know, we love helping out the local communities. We love getting out into the bush. And we love making just that little bit of a difference to people anywhere we can. And caught up in the spirit of giving, Whippet's the first to lead with his wallet. We wanted to sort of help raise some money, obviously, for the Give It Foundation. So we started buying things and Whippet got himself a whip. I thought, you know, I'll buy a whip. Someone out here will be able to teach me how to do it. And by the end of the trip, my goal is to be able to crack the whip. I think within that first night, he nearly took his eye out. Got eight more days to get the master of this. I'll get two going by the end of the trip. <laughs> With the training wheels removed, the boys were out to make a big impression on Date 2, which is a 519 kilometre leg west towards the old mining town of White Cliffs. There was mud galore and uh, lots of cars getting bogged. Not us, but, which is interesting. Came across car B222 and uh, we found them just stuck up to the belly of their car and offered a bit of help. But the thing is, when we get out of the car, we've got no idea what to do anyway. Someone threw a snatch strap out and I was like, well, never used one of these before, but you know, we, we connected it up and um, our Bondi beast, they pulled them straight out. Surprise, surprise, day two, we're already rescuing people. Clearly, we're a bit better at this than they think. The best thing about the Road Boss Rally for me is it's not the first person across the line that wins. It's done on averages and if you stop to help someone, you actually get the time that you stop to help taken off your car time. So you're never gonna leave someone in the lurch. If they're in trouble, you're always gonna stop and help. I think the reason why we didn't get into trouble is because we were the last car leaving. So we just saw the carnage as we went through them. We figured out where not to go. <laughs> After a better day behind the wheel, the Bondi boys were starting to gain in confidence and felt like they might have a chance of winning the rally. Ah! Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. After day two, we were like, ain't so hard, we can win, especially if they're all getting bogged and we're not. So we started to start looking at the score sheet and started trying to figure out where we were sitting, but you know, unfortunately day two, we're still last. Whippet still struggles to master his new toy, much to everyone's amusement. Whippet was still practicing his whip and he started to do it in the main street of the town, which I didn't think that was a good idea because what do you know, some bloke comes along that obviously knows how to crack a whip and thought, geez, what is he doing to that poor whip? <laughs> Some old local bloke just pulls his four-wheel drive up and goes, you don't know how to use that thing, do you? I was like, no, not really. And he, uh, he just, that's it, he's out, stopping oh, the road. Get out of here! Get out of here! Straight over, shows me how to crack the whip a couple of times and it started to pick a few tips up. From there, I've nailed it. That's a bit better. That's a bit better, yes, eh? Well into day two, and despite an improved performance, the Bondi boys fall further behind the rest of the field, with Reedy's continual rest stops not helping. I've inherited the weakest bladder in the world, and as soon as I drink a little bit of water, it just wants to come straight out of me. That makes life tough when you're driving for eight hours a day. So yeah, the poor boys in the car, they're like, mate, you need to pee again? Oh, I try and time my bladder stops with gate openings, but sometimes doesn't always happen. I need to go wee. <laughs> Driving between White Cliffs and Pack Saddle, the boys begin to appreciate just how dry the countryside is. One of the objectives of the Road Boss Rally is to shed light on the drought currently ravaging New South Wales and Queensland. Some of the towns we're going through, they haven't seen rain in three years. And if we can help really, really draw that attention back to everyone else back in the city and we can help more of our farmers, then it's a good thing. We've driven through some dusty, dusty trails and it makes it really, really hard when there's no water out here. 
lot of people are doing it really tough. It's opened my eyes up to the effects of the drought and the thing that the charity's doing, it's, it's giving these people some creature comforts and making their life a lot easier. Despite big improvements, the boys continue to lag at the back of the field. As a team driving, I feel like our performances were pretty good. Once we worked out who was best in which position, they say I'm a bad driver, I disagree, but I seem to be the best navigator and I think the other two boys probably drive a little bit better. So once we kind of worked that out, we're moving along pretty well. Still coming last. After a long day of driving and 15 comfort stops later, the boys arrive in the small outback town of Pack Saddle. After three gruelling days behind the wheel, the boys are ready to unwind. So I think it had a population of eight. And so when 50 or 60 road boss rally cars drive into town, the population goes up about 3,000%. By now, we've spent a good three days in a car with two knuckleheads like that. I was ready to let loose. The pub was just full of the right drinks. And uh, as the night went on, it just got better and better. It turned into quite a night. Early the next morning, the boys are invited to take a flight with a flying padre, a local minister servicing remote communities. Next morning we're up early, a little bit of a hangover, but uh, no better way to shake it off than an outback aeroplane flight. We got to meet the flying padre, or compadre, or I like to call him. He's uh, Dave, great man. He's, uh, he's the local priest and he flies around and says a few prayers. Now so far behind the rest of the field, the boys turn to God for divine intervention. Mate, if you could uh, give us a prayer to keep us safe in the race. and also Keep us safe in the race? Yeah, and, in the race. The and rally. how are you going for position-wise? Uh, mate, if you could bump us up a couple of notches, <laughs> that'd be great. No, I can't do that. The bloke upstairs <laughs> might be able to, but right. it's up to you can guys you driving. You... We started throwing in a couple of extra requests, bump us up the leaderboard, make sure the beers are cold at the end of the uh, next rally driving. So Father God, we've, uh, we've had these requests for um, yeah, safety on the, the road, but also for a bit of a bump up in the, in the position. In the standing, we'd <laughs> yeah, like to standing. roll up to about 30, oh, would be great. Yeah. <laughs> they were also praying for a miracle to control Reedy's bladder. I've got travel johns, if you need to, need to pee on the way. <laughs> Oh, give those to old. He needs these. Can mate. we take those in the car? Yeah, I think someone's tipped him off about my bladder and he uh, gave me a portable John just in case I needed to have a leak in his aeroplane. If they thought the mild mannered preacher was going to be a conservative pilot, they were sorely mistaken. When we were dipping at the road and driving around, we thought we were in a Red Bull stunt plane. I was a little bit concerned. Definitely feel like I had God on my side up in that plane. That was the only thing that kept us from uh, hitting the tarmac. By the fourth day of the rally, teamwork starts to unravel. After too many drinks in Pack Saddle, Reedy and Whippet decide to sleep, leaving Corey to drive and navigate all on his own. And I looked at the, the navigational thing and I went, Next turn, 113 kilometres. See you, mate. I'm straight out. I just curled up, head in the sun on the window, and out we go. And then next minute, Reedy was asleep in the back as well. You know, they probably helped me nav for about 30 minutes, and they were out cold. Both my navvies, I had no idea where I was going. He was driving and having to navigate himself, and normally that's not very good teamwork from us, but hey, I was tired. I think that was the longest drive we got without having to stop to go to the toilet though, so maybe the more time he spends sleeping, the better. Cross 8 to Road Boss Rally. Hey, uh, my two navvies are dead set to sleep and snoring. They are completely useless, and if I don't get help, I'm gonna get lost. I could understand why Corey uh, probably felt a little let down by not one, but two navigators having a sleep, but yeah, it's a team, so he's gotta hold up his end of the bargain. The more west we get, the more barren it gets and the more desolate. We just seem to be seeing more and more carcasses and stuff. You can really tell that they're doing it tough out here. The country out there is so dry and arid. It's like you've stepped onto Mars at some times. During the 467 kilometre leg from Pack Saddle to Tibberborough, the rally stops at Cameron Corner, the point where the boundary lines of New South Wales, Queensland and South Australia all meet. It was a, a long, dusty trail to get ourselves to Cameron Corner. 
And as much as there's not much out there, it's a very, very significant place. Which is where Queensland, New South Wales and South Australia all meet. That's special, that's something I've never seen before. There was three of us and we were all each in a different state. And we don't mean drunk and sober, we mean literal state. It was actually nice to be that far away for them for a couple of minutes. It's always good to get away from Reedy and when you're stuck in a car for 10 hours a day, to be able to put him in a whole other state was so good. On the way to Tibberborough, the boys relish a series of long, open, sandy tracks. Whip took over for the next section after Cameron's Corner. There was a couple of good hills, a couple of mounds that we um, probably misjudged and got a little bit more airborne than we thought we'd get. We hit a bit of sand, which we thought we'd feel quite at home. And it seemed to be quite bumpy, and at one point, we all got airborne. <laughs> bang, bang, straight through it. The boys are blaming me, I'm blaming them because it's meant to be their job to pick it up. But uh, yeah, driving through the sand dunes was awesome. I've driven on the beach a fair bit up and down the east coast, but when it's, uh, when it's red sand dunes, I haven't done that. It's pretty fun driving. Whippet is a pretty good driver, very confident driver. But when you're S-bending through sand and dirt and mud, you need to know how to reverse steer as well. And uh, they're slowly getting the hang of it. Despite being manhandled by three rookie drivers, somehow the Bondi Beast continues to power on. The car is travelling like a beast. The mechanics that worked on this thing obviously knew they were in for some average drivers, put a bit of extra TLC into it and it's holding up a treat. Uh, it had to be strong because we sort of had a fair idea that they probably couldn't drive that well. So we um, put together a car that wasn't going to break. Uh, it had to be an Aussie V8 and uh, so it looks good, sounds good, good looking car. It's a pretty tidy sort of car, but we needed something that would make it over the 10 days and the four and a half thousand kilometres, and so far, so good. With three knuckleheads like us getting in there, I think they've probably tried to make it as bulletproof as possible. They've done a great job, and that X8 is pretty much unstoppable. 400 kilometres into the fourth day, tempers finally reach breaking point when the boys get hopelessly lost. OK, we, we need to go straight and then we take the next left around this mound here, what keeping, the mound, keeping the mound on the left. What page are you on? Mound on the left. Whilst we are, you know, best of mates, it does get a little testing, not to mention, you know, the farting, the, the talking, the singing, all these things start to add up. You're hungry, you're thirsty, and then we got lost. No, no, right, right. I'm calling you on the wrong page. Mate, 75. 75. Now right. we've got to head straight for this ridge over here. No, 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 left, 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 left. I'm trying to tell him which way to go, and he was adamant to go the other way, and it absolutely erupted. Straight ahead and, and right. Left. No, 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 right. Left. It's right. It's left. We've gone past that no, one. No, but it's right. Reedy and Whit were having a good slanging match, and I was trying to put a piece of valuable information in. Whether it got listened to by anyone, I really don't know. Mate, these two got no idea. I'm on the right page. They've got no idea what's going on. And you've brought us around those two mounds, and we're meant to be up there. But you said go left at the mound where the fence No, I said go left then right. Reedy's pretty headstrong, and when he's adamant and sure of his decision, he's very sure of his decision and he'll definitely let you know it. Yeah, left and then right, right would have taken us along that ridge. I wouldn't instead. mind you getting right out of this car. <laughs> Mate, Mate, if you just drive where I tell you to go, we wouldn't have a problem. Mate, Normally it's fun and games when you get lost in a car, but not when you're so remote and so rural as we are. And if you're not in line of sight of the CB radio, we ain't getting any help. Road boss rally field, we are completely lost. Like we actually don't even know where we are. Reedy finally decides he's had enough and spits the dummy. There's 13 kilometres of sand every way around. If we gone right there, we'd be sweet. Oh, yeah, time you threw a tantrum, you kook. Tension's got a little high, a few little arguments. I think he spat the dummy, threw the map in the air and started crying. And I just wanted to drive off and leave him there. At that stage, I was sort of ready to jump in another car. I'm always right. The arguing continued well into the night. In the end, with no help coming and desperate to get to the pub, Reedy resorts to lighting a distress signal. We need as much help as we can get. <laughs> We've got to get help. <laughs> What's the point? He has gotten us lost ridiculous amounts. Ditch him. Turtles. Absolute turtles. It was a bit of a blow up. And it was the first one of the trip, so it was a bit significant. There was just three arguments going on, no matter what was getting said. 
and uh, it's probably not the best way to resolve an issue. All in all, it's the navigator's fault, and so that getting lost was Reedy's fault. After much soul searching, the three lifeguards kiss and make up, and by 8 p.m., they limp into Tibberborough, ready to drown their sorrows. You all meet back at the next location. The best thing about it is my two favourite things, beer and fire. And we just sit around the fire, drink some beers and talk story about what happened that day. There's nothing better for mending friendships than karaoke. They had this big pub with fire pits out front and then I saw them starting to install the speakers and I knew karaoke was coming. The beers were flowing, the mentalities were like, who cares, all coming out, and mate, there was a lot of bad voices going down, but when you're singing, no one cares. Twisting the night away. Now, Reedy's one of those kind of guys that will give anything a crack. He may not be naturally talented at much, but he'll give anything a crack. And, uh, and they opened up the karaoke machine, and after watching him do one song in Whitecliff, I thought, oh, this whole town's gonna kick us out in five minutes. Turns out he sang probably 25 songs that night. I feel like if it was a karaoke competition, I definitely would have been at the pointy end of the field. Oh, I will catch you, I will, I will be waiting, time after time. Got the crowd going and everyone started having a good time and we all ended up having a sing with Road Boss and yeah, it was a great night. After repeated encores, Reedy's off-key singing starts to wear very thin. Well, once we'd been singing for about two hours, the police arrived and I was just about to belt out YMCA. All we needed was a copper and they turned up and I was like, you beauty. He came in full fancy dress, this bloke. It's to stay at the YMCA. It's to stay at the YMCA. And they joined in. Threw out a couple of YMCA's and, uh, and really made for a funny, funny sort of exchange. His singing is so bad and there are so many complaints, the police are forced to step in, much to everyone's delight. I think after song like 25, the, the locals had put in like a, a nuisance complaint. The coppers had had enough, the whole pub had had enough. Turns out that they are actually here because noise complaints about my bad singing and they took me away. Threw his arms behind his back, dragged him through the crowd like a streaker at the cricket, straight into the paddy wagon, off you go, son. Well, I don't know, I feel like I'm a good singer and I'll stand by that, but it seems like the half the town of Tipperborough didn't like it. Reedy took it a bit too far and, uh, you know, pops the tops. It was pretty much the highlight of the evening. Yeah, it was a bit of peace and quiet for the whole town. <laughs> it was pretty funny seeing Reedy get arrested and uh, one of the things I've actually seen, he thought he was pretty fit and tough but he's actually going downhill pretty quick so... <laughs> They're like a mother duck just bringing them in. They're pretty gullible, they come pretty easy. <laughs> Jamie Lawson is the heart and soul of the Road Boss Rally and he's been central to the rally's ongoing success. Jamie, you know, he runs this show and, and they call him the Road Boss. He's an incredible human being. I've never met anyone who cares about making sure people are having a good time or experiencing something more than he does. Jamie's just a great guy. He puts this rally on, he organises it, and he just wants to make sure that people are out there having a good time, but also make sure that we're helping Australians along the way and the rally's doing good for the communities that we go to. Road Boss Rally just has an absolute pack of legends. And Jamie at the helm with the help from all of his crew, things like this wouldn't happen. The love that he has for the Outback is, is second to none, and then which then translates into the charity side of things. They're raising some really, really big money. The slogan we use is ordinary people doing extraordinary things. We have plumbers, farmers, truck drivers, business owners, the, the, the full spectrum and demographic of people, and everybody just falls in love with it. Amazing characters, and if they're not a character when they start, we soon bring the best out of them. If you're ever gonna go out in the bush, then do it with Road Boss Rally. Jamie and the crew, they'll take you places you can't go, they'll keep you safe. And honestly, the people that are on this rally are some of the best people you'll ever meet. For Whippet, winning the Road Boss Rally isn't everything. It's more about sharing the experience with two good mates. We're not going so well on the rankings. We had hoped it probably would be a little higher up than like maybe the last place. But as a team, we're all right. I think most of the people on this rally didn't think we'd make it out of Cowra. I think the thing is, we keep stopping. One, for Reedy to go to the toilet, but two, we keep looking around. We've never been here. It's time for us to experience the bush and the outback. And if I get stuck in town talking to someone for an extra 15 minutes, we slide back three places, so be it.
all the other people on this journey of slowly becoming family for me. And that's, you know, you're sharing an experience together, you know, some make it through, some don't make it through. We help each other out. We're always concerned about each other's safety and everyone here on this trip is just amazing. We've been having a good time in there. It's a bit of banter going on back and forth and, you know, that just makes the day so much better. The Road Boss Rally doesn't survive without its legion of volunteers. And to repay the favour, Jamie Lawson decides to implement a covert Hug a Volunteer Day. A lot of these officials that we see out there on course are actually volunteers. So Jamie's decided that it was Hug an Official Day and so we made sure we hugged all our officials and really showed that they were appreciated. Every checkpoint, get out, hug an official, show them you love them, show them your appreciation. And I think it was well received, the officials liked it. A couple of sweaty hugs and smelly hugs going down, but it was good. I think they got a nice little surprise of everyone getting out, give them a hug and you know, it's, it's what it's about, sharing the love and, and making sure everyone's happy and and enjoying what they're doing. Hello, kiss, delicious. Kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> Get out of it. Now over 2,000 kilometres into the rally, and on the way to Nakundra, the boys suffer their first major casualty, a flat tyre, with Whippet copping all the blame. The Bondi Beast had been absolutely humming along for the last four days, and then day five, unfortunately, we got our first little hiccup, and it came in the shape of a I was driving and we were going across some pretty rocky terrain and I hit it and I was like, uh, uh yeah, we're gone. And it just started going and the car starts rattling and it's a quick pull over to the side and then it's a uh, case of working out how to change it. Of course, it was definitely Whippet's fault because Whippet was driving. Yeah. Takes a while, this little jack doesn't go up that quick. I don't actually think it's going any higher, to be honest. Whip, do you know what you're doing? So we were pretty stuck. To be honest. Once the tyre blew out, it was time. The Bondo boys needed rescuing. We were laughing, like we could, I just couldn't stop laughing. I, I, I was hoping someone would stop and help. After a heavy night of karaoke, Reedy's burnt a lot of bridges and help is in short supply. Thanks for helping. Being part of this new rally family, we felt like that we could probably call on the help of our fellow rally car drivers. And as we sort of tried to wave a few down, we got a few See you later, and a few giggles and a few laughs over the radio. And we we're starting to think no one was going to help us at all. Third car laughed at us. Fourth car came past filming us oh. and laughing. Oh, yeah, don't worry, we just pulled you out of the mud the other day, you grubs. <laughs> Incredibly, the first car to offer help also has a flat tyre and doesn't even realise it. What happens next is a comedy of errors. The only car that stopped as he wound down the window and said, How's your flat tyre going? Whippet noticed that he also had a flat tyre and he said, pretty good as yours, mate. That's a flat. <laughs> <laughs> he looked out the window and he was like, ah, damn it. So he pulled over, next minute there's two cars with flat tyres. It was so funny. It was like a Benny Hill section where everything was going wrong. As I tried to jack the car up from the back, it all worked well until we realised that I'd put the jack in sand and the car started to tip over. And as he's trying to pull it down, his feet are off the ground and the car starts tilting. Stop, 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 stop. Like, stop, 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 stop. So next thing, it's chaos. We've got three off, because obviously all the other cars wanted to help them and not us. We thought people were stopping to help us. They were stopping to have a laugh at us. Just swim between the flags, guys. <laughs> what? This is how not to do it. So the three of us are pushing the car, trying to keep it level while we got one of the other guys to pull the tire off and put a new one on. I think there was about four cars stopped just laughing at us. The rocks are a very dangerous place to swim, we all know that. They didn't care about their time, they just wanted the, the entertainment. <laughs> How many blokes does it take to change a tyre? As a team, I don't think that was our finest hour and I think that sort of reflected poorly upon our journey across this rally race. After a hilarious tyre change, the boys set off to the historic Dig Tree, a spot made famous by the pioneering explorers Burke and Wills. One of the probably most amazing things about this rally is the fact that not only do you get to be a part of this great family experience of racing cars around Australia, you also get to experience historical places such as the Dig Tree. The one thing about the Outback is it's got some amazing history and it's got some amazing stories of triumph and failures and the course that took us past the Dig Tree, which is Burke and Wills, two of the kind of great explorers. Unfortunately, that's, that's where they passed away. The Burke and Wills expedition sadly ended in tragedy and it looked like the Bondi rescue expedition was heading in the same direction. 
Our journey so far has been a bit of tragedy and a bit of triumph. We could very much relate to the fact that Burke and Will's adventure ended in disaster and after our flat tyre earlier this morning, it was looking like ours was too. Unlike Burke and Will's, who struggled for food, Corey was having the opposite problem, with his waistline bursting at the seams. I tell you what, Corey loves a free feed and when there's hamburgers on, he'll have three of them. I enjoyed a hamburger and a, and a drink and having a chat with a couple of kids and I look over my shoulder and there's Corey hooking into his second burger, third burger, and he started putting packets of chips in his pockets. And I am growing a belly. Without fail, I think I'm going to have to go home and do some serious soul searching. In the end he walked out, he had lamingtons in his pockets, chocolate cake under his hat. He's, uh, he's known for collecting things along the way, Corey, and food's one of them. After days of dry, arid tracks, the boys stumble across a water-soaked track with the temptation too much to resist. Rather than looking to make up time in the race, the boys preferred a chance to play in the mud. We searched high and low, used a special stick to try and find some water, and boom, we found the only little slushy pond, and, uh, and uh, we went up against Rally Boss's son in some little burnouts and some, having some fun in the mud. I was driving and I was like, you know what, I'm just, if I get a couple of metres in front of it, they'll be eating my dust and, well, water. And, uh, and so that was it, it was 60k an hour straight into the puddle. It's epic, you know, we haven't seen much water out here and that was just pure enjoyment. Unfortunately, car 55 didn't enjoy the wet conditions, with the Bondi Beast coming to the rescue. Team 55, mate, they got bogged truly. The snatch strap, out here, they're essential. We're getting used to how it works and how to use it, so I offered a bit of help, pulled them out of one ditch, drove straight into another one, pulled them out of a second ditch, and then it was back to racing. I think Whip was amazing on the snatch strap to pull them out. I think he had to rescue them three times, and uh, I don't know, 55 were real happy about that. The Bondi Beast was proving indestructible and a force to be reckoned with. The Bondi Beast is holding up a treat the engine in that thing is so powerful and the four wheel drive, it's helping us get out of a lot of sticky situations. So far, it hasn't even looked like getting bogged. That car is so tricked up to the nines and it's, it's been well prepared. It's got a lot of guts. It wasn't just Reedy's bladder stalling their progress. His driving wasn't helping either. Corey's just opened the gate. We're heading in for 20 k's of a number seven wacko. Reedy's a man of the people, but he's not a man of the cars. And he's he should just stay navigating, to be quite honest. Keep going. Oh, yep. That's a broken axle. <laughs> he's not that good, eh? He's not that fast. He's not that confident in the corners. Pretty much whenever Reedy gets in the car, the pulse goes up a bit, but I'm definitely holding on to the, uh, the old bars up here. Whoa. Lose it. Spin it. We quite often hold him the oh my god bars to uh, make sure we don't roll the car with him. Oh, the bump's up here. Oh, oh, hey! Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't break. Oh, slow it down. I slow can't. it down. I can't. Slow it down. He's probably best off in the navigator's seat. Oh, oh, big oh, ditchy, big ditchy. Nice driving room. Bro, this is the best you've driven. Mate, I'm a good driver. During an overnight stop in Thargaminda, the Bondi boys offer to clean windscreens in an effort to raise money. Much to their horror, all 65 cars line up to be washed. We thought probably four or five people would take us up on the offer, 65 cars later. The old arms are still a little bit sore, but now nah, look, we, uh, it was just either a gold coin donation, and I tell you what, it was nothing but notes. Everyone threw plenty of money at us, and we were lucky enough to raise about $1,500. There's one difficult thing about washing car windscreens when you're out in the middle of nowhere is you're actually using like artesian water and it comes up looking like mud. So you're pretty much just cleaning the mud with mud and taking some money, giving it to the school and saying, off you go. And I think the windscreens actually ended up dirtier after they'd been washed by me, but still I think they were happy to see us out there having a crack and raising money. It was good to see Reedy out there cleaning windscreens. Might get him to do mine when we get home. It's blowing my mind how generous these people are. With $1,500 collected, the boys then took the money down the road to hand over to the local school. Myself, Reddy and Whip, we trudged on down to the local school with the amazing people from Give It. 
and handed over an extra 1500 cash for their up and coming snow trip. It was great to see how much the kids at the school really appreciated the money that they were getting and to know where it's going and see actually firsthand how we can impact, we were happy. Next stop on the rally was the Narama Racetrack, home to the infamous Road Boss Rally Bush Olympics. When we arrived in Narama Racetrack, there was a very interesting set of games going on and the first thing we saw was Dog P Lotto. You put money on a tin or a tyre and they send a dog in that needs to do a wee and it wheez on something and if it wheezes on yours, you win. It doesn't get any more Australian than that, I don't think. Dog peeing lotto. Reedy could certainly relate to the dog peeing competition and was tempted to join in. He should have been in the dog pee lotto, 110%, would have won. Next up, it was time for the legendary Bush Olympics. You start with a shoe off in a, in a big uh, sort of barrel. You flip that, you put your shoe on, then there's races with putting beers in different nets and up and back, a motorbike with no engine, that sort of stuff. Chaos, you know, anywhere where there's like cross-dressing involved, motorbikes in neutral, bindies in the floor, rolling barrels, skull and beers and then trying to all get back in one piece is pretty entertaining. It was a combination of just absolute craziness and weird, and we gave it a good crack. <laughs> the finale of the night was the Stonehenge gift, with the Bondi boys auctioned off before taking on a nudie run down the main racetrack. Then the Stonehenge gift, what a special race. One that stops a racetrack, that's for sure. It's literally an 80 metre run in just shoes and a hat, that's it. Who's got $100 in there? $100 in We were all auctioned off before the race. Unfortunately, I didn't make as much money as Whippet and Corey. I think they raised about 4,000 bucks or more for blokes to take their pants off and run 100 metres down the straight of the racetrack. Reedy Dad got his rig out and apart from being totally embarrassed about his rig in general, and then when you go to the front view, not a lot doing there either. According to my uh, watch, it's only about six degrees out here, so it's, uh, it's pretty fresh, but you know, a quick 80 metre dash, that gets you warmed up. Ready, set, go, and up and running now. Definitely not one of the highlights of my athletic career. I feel like I've gone faster and I've worn more clothes. But now, nah, look, all the same, again, raising money for a great cause. A major part of the Road Boss Rally is that out of car fun and entertainment. So um, we put a lot of effort into the days to put together a, a great day that challenge people and they love. And then they park up the cars of a night time and, and interact with each other and uh, interact with the communities and the people. Bondi boys have taken on the spirit and harnessed it and uh, literally ran with it. After a big night of Narama antics, it was time for another 450 kilometre trek towards the legendary Nindigully pub. It's phenomenal what you get to see out on these roads. Like we're just driving along next minute, massive cotton field ablaze. So we jumped out, channeled our inner Peter Garrett and got our beds are burning going on. Started dancing around like idiots. The good thing is out here, there's not a lot of people around, so no one actually sees you do half the stupid stuff. We had a bit of fun and a laugh and then jump back in the car and keep driving until the next thing. At the end of day eight, the boys arrive at the Nindigully pub, ready for a well-earned drink or two. How good's this joint? This is a pub. We'd heard a lot about the Nindigully pub and we'd heard it was a lot of fun and when we arrived it didn't disappoint. It just looked like the kind of place I wanted to kick back and enjoy a few beers. Now, late in the rally, some of the teams took time out to reflect on what had been an unforgettable adventure so far. We're, you know, big kids in cars, um, you see the, the communities and um, it uh, just creates magic and, um, and that's what gets people. Road Boss just has that ethos, a really great ethos and it's a giving to the towns and it's also a give it what they do, it's just brilliant. Old cars and rallying and driving and out in the bush. It's good times, good people. Just to get the three of us together and come out on a, a journey like this and experience the bush and the different uh, atmosphere and the people on the rally, 
No, it's really good. We love the, the challenge of just all the tracks that Road Boss finds for us and then we also like being able to help all the communities along the way so in making an impact on people's lives as we go. Rally is just a family of friends so you know we're just all, all here we watch everybody grow and you know and just friendships and yeah so it's, it's not just a rally it's it's about the people who are on the rally really. Just to say that you're associated with uh, with Jamie and the Road Boss Rally and give it um, I think people wear it as a bit of a badge they're proud of it. Day 9 sent the rally east towards Kingaroy, with the stage turning out to be the toughest yet, with a series of deep, sandy tracks creating havoc for the entire field. Many of the cars have kind of been going alright up until now, but we hit some real sand as we get closer to the coast, and we just saw absolute carnage, like many cars getting bogged, and unfortunately for us, ours was one of them. Cars just started bogging one after the other. So it was up to us to try and go and help them out. And uh, yeah, jump up, put the snatch strap on again, and I got the job of trying to pull this one car out that it, its wheels were facing the other way. Unfortunately, they'd snapped the left tie rod, which controls both the steering. We had to hook her up, tow it backwards out off the middle of the track so others could, could get through. Did a really good job. Whip's getting really, really good at, at this towing game. For his good fortune, he ended up getting bogged trying to get back out as well. We forgot bogged. We've rescued a lot of cars over the course of this trip. Unfortunately, in the process, the old Bondi beast, she got a little bit stuck. Thank God for the Toyota Land Cruiser, ripped her straight out. Up the road, we were back on our way. The Road Boss Rally is all about starting together and finishing together. And that's why when you see someone in distress or you're in distress yourself, people are always going to come to your rescue unless you've got a flat tire. With the rally now heading east towards the coast, the landscape finally started to green. Yeah, we're heading east now, heading back towards the coast. We've gone through areas like Darling Downs and making our way into Kingaroy, and you can see things are a little bit greener. We sort of start to lose a lot more of that red and the green starts to really appear. We knew we were heading back to the coast. After 10 days on the road, and with Reedy getting on everyone's nerves, it was now the final push home to the finish line in Caloundra. Day 10 we set off, we were on the home straight. We just pushed on and it was good to see that nice ocean. Reedy's general behaviour seems to cause wear and tear on most people, but uh, sit yourself in a car for eight days with him and you start to really want to put the foot down and get to the finish line. Team Bondi are so far behind the rest of the field, not even cheating can help them from here. We've skipped a couple of stages. It's not helping our standings up the ladder. We're still dead set coming in last. Even when we did cheat in the last few days, we still couldn't manage to make up time. This rally game's hard. Despite grandiose plans to win the rally, the task proves futile, with the boys finishing a distant last. Reedy, however, tried to keep a brave face. We crossed the line stone motherless last. We had no idea what we were doing. And judging by the results, it still looks like we have no idea what we're doing. It's been an epic adventure and um, seen some amazing things, been a part of some amazing things. We're here, mate. Finally here. Unashamedly, Reedy blames their poor performance on his fellow lifeguards. Oh, look, I feel like my driving was next level. Unfortunately, you know, you're only as good as your team and, and when your teammates are letting you down a little bit, it's hard. According to one person, they reckon we're about two days behind. A bit of that comes down to one, Reedy's bladder, two, Reedy's driving. I'm not going to miss being in a cab with two knuckleheads, but we've had a really, really good trip. Whether you're in first place or last place, it doesn't really matter. We were in last place. It's not about the race in the end, it's about this experience and the people you meet, the towns you go to and the impact you can make. You know, it doesn't feel that good to take a wooden spoon home to the tower, but that wooden spoon, we're going to go and eat some humble soup and we're going to come back next year. Incredibly, due to the generosity of the Road Boss Rally participants, the rally raises over $250,000 for people in need. The fact that Road Boss Rally can raise over $250,000 through that Give It charity is just amazing. That $250,000 is going to support Give It so that we can be a free service to charities. And we're doing 10,000 donations a week. Seeing the impact that Give It's making is, is probably the best bit. 
and knowing that we've been a part of that, raising money for people along the way, that's, that's the special bit and the, the part that I'll remember. When things are tough, people need help and, and that's what Road Boss Rally and Give It A Do. We came in here as novices. We knew that we were always going to be out of our depth. But in saying that, we may not have won the rally, but I feel like we won some hearts. To be able to come out here and sort of maybe raise a bit of awareness of what's happening in this drought and, and you know, help raise a bit of money and, you know, we're having a good time, but it's more about the people and the communities that we can help along the way. We've had such a good time and, and I think, you know, last night saying goodbye to a few people really shows like how welcoming the Road Boss Rally is and everyone that's involved. It's been one of the best experiences of my life. To really, I guess, help fellow Australians that are in need, that's the best thing for me. It's a blur of just good times, good laughs and then camping and fires and beers and you know the whole thing has been amazing. A scale of 1 to 10, 15. It's probably the best 10 days with these two pelicans you could ever have and with everyone else on the rally it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been an amazing experience sharing it with a couple of my good mates from the beach, meeting some amazing people and doing good things for a great charity.